I remember also the week when I was um, detained, just the previous week, I was um, awarded as one of the uh, eight women we were called the rising stars in South Africa. And when the security police came for me, the, the flowers and stuff were still there. But for those very work, I got uh, uh, arrested under the Communism Act, Section 10. So, so it is confusing, but you have to know. And the other thing is that I know for sure, uh, with the detentions and everything, there are consequences. Uh, some people, there are divorces that come about or whatever comes about. But for me, what stand out is the support that we got from the community uh, when we were detained. That was a beautiful thing that I still value up to today. Um, yeah, perhaps lobby for a platform where we can ask for generational trauma to be addressed? It's kind of a difficult question because in all our communities, we have a negative view on mental health. If people had to go see a psychologist or a counselor or a social worker, there was always the feeling that something is wrong with you. Now, put that layer of something is wrong with you on top of everything else that they are facing on a daily basis. There was also this perception that you must be strong. Now, I, um, my late mother, bless her soul, I remember when I was detained, her greatest fear was that her employer will find out that I'm sitting in prison for politics. It was a fear because she feared losing her job. And um, I think she was not alone in that kind of a fear. So, so I always admired the communities who understood that to be detained, to be arrested for fighting for justice is not a shame. But I could also understand from my mother's perspective a desire to protect her job, uh, you know, because of the family income. Uh, but these were some of the things. And I think people would sit around the table, uh, neighbors, they would talk and uh, uh, so forth, but they they didn't really deal with this, the issue. You found, for instance, a lot of smoking, a lot of drinking as coping mechanisms. The activists, I would say, um, they had one another. They could at least relate at a similar level in terms of what was going on, in terms of the planning. Now, I... <laughs> I, I, I want to tell this story. Um, I graduated from UNISA uh, this particular year. Uh, I've done communications. And so I wanted to have a party at my house to celebrate. But this was during the time of uh, Soweto burning, right? And all the, the uh, feelings and so on. Now, my colleague, who was very supportive of me at the time at UWC, was Tim Jenkin. I'm also glad to say that um, people eventually uh, got to a point where we had to educate them what it means, what are the differences between being a political uh, a detainee versus Remember, we lived in communities where 
we had our tough guys who often had to go to, to prison for, for criminality. Uh, so we had to, to, to help them understand. And that was also an educational process uh, for, for them. So I think uh, for some of us in our communities, it was not so easy. But if you understood uh, where they came from and what the influences were on them and what fears they had, especially around jobs, that was the big thing to keep your job. And um, I think I gradually just accepted that that is where my mother was. I wish it wasn't like that. But then uh, in our community was this guy called Cyril. Cyril was a bit mentally challenged, but people like Johnny Esau, Albert Bukas, Peter Jones and them, they never left Cyril alone. So Cyril, in my opinion, did two acts of defiance that gave me hope that as long as we work with everybody, we can bring about change. Cyril was a problem in his, uh, to his parents. So they went to look for help. And then when you're over 16, they sent you to go work at, at, at this institution or that institution. So Cyril worked there in Goodwood for the army, uh, uh, on the army base. And he had to sweep, and then his uh, supervisor shouted at him. He took off his overall, he threw down his broom, and he said, I'm leaving. You people are, are, are burning, the, uh, killing the black people. You know, he could use the black uh, uh, consciousness language that he heard uh, uh, from Johnny Isol and his people. And that was his act. The second time was when he came with my sister to visit me at Paul's one, and he saw that I was in prison. And he was then placed at the SACC, which was the Scarlet Army based there in Easter River. And Cyril again defied. He, he, he decided he's not going back there. They put Edna in prison. So, you know, yeah, you have an example of somebody who is um, mentally challenged, people would say, and yet he understood the political consequences. So those types of things give me hope. We must not overlook any person as somebody who has the potential to conscientize others to bring about change. And you know what else Cyril did? When he knew there was now swoops or stuff done against us, like Ben Palmer was killed. And Cyril went early morning. He collected all the newspapers in front of the cafes there in Aldrog, and he came to drop at every house a newspaper uh, uh, so that we can read about Ben Palmer. Uh, so, so, you need to look at everybody in your community and how can you reach them. That is what I would say about the mental health. But but the mental health government would have to provide more resources so that we can have in every community a facility. But also we have to recognize that the people who have to give the help, like the social workers, they are burned out. Uh, uh, so there must be support structures for those who are giving the help if we want to move forward with, with um, uh, bringing about chains and supporting our people in communities. I, you know how, how I really hurt when I see the mothers cry on TV um, when they have to deal with deaths of their children or family members. It, it's like stab wounds. And then I say to myself, 
A week from now, like with our detention, you expect it to come out of detention and you go right to the stove and you start to cook again and so on and so on. And nobody really bothers to find out, are you truly okay inside of you? You just have to continue. And, and those are practices we should change, I would say. Inside of me, there is always a, an emotional reaction to injustices, to oppression, no matter where in the world I see it. And having lived in New York, and worked as a, as a psychologist, I had a different piece of the world in my office every hour. And I could see the impact of uh, uh, colonization on no matter where in the world that took place. And I could see that there were still um, identity issues that were brought about 